Welcome everyone to Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel, where we take a deeper dive into boxing's top stories. George DiMatellis alongside Pauli Malinaji and Chris Algieri, and we have a special guest joining us. He is a welterweight contender known as The Professor. Michael Fox joining us here on Deep Waters. Michael, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to join us here. We appreciate you coming through here on Pro Box TV. Oh, man, thanks for having me. It's an honor, man. You know, when they say Chris Algieri and Pauli Malinaji want to speak to you, come on, man, that's two former world champions. It's an honor. Now, you have uh, experience here. We, we brought you on to talk about your career and also because uh, you were like a last-second sparring uh, replacement or sparring uh, brought-in partner for Tim Zhu because of his fight, the change to Sebastian Fundora. And uh, we have video of the way in there. I wanted to ask you about uh, what was it about Tim Zhu that impressed you in sparring? Um, the thing is, being in the ring with him, you see that, you know, he's thinking a lot more than he gets credit for. You know, he comes in with the high guard. He's always applying pressure. But, you know, he had, he's, he's, very, he's very calculated. You know what I mean? He, he's thinking you can't do the same thing with him like a bunch of times without him, you know, having an answer for it. You, know, you can't show it too many times. So I think, I think you know, he's getting better. I mean, he's, he's gotten better since, you know, like each time he gets in the ring. And, like, I can really see it just from, you know, just from being in the ring with him. We did what? In the short time, we did we did like 16 rounds because it was myself and Audrey Holmes from Flint, Michigan. Uh, we uh, we shared the workload, so um, shout out to him as well. Yeah, Mike, you're you're what six six four six four? Well, four? six four and a half. Yeah, right. So so obviously you were called in for for your your height. Um, what what was the what was the mood in camp about the switch and about fighting someone who is? A southpaw also, which is different than Keith Thurman, and that much taller, you know, because um, Fundora is 6'5", five 6'5 five and a half. You're 6'4 and a half, so obviously it makes sense. What was the mood around camp from, from Team Zoo? Well, I mean, from Tim directly, I think, you know, it was just the show goes on. You got to remember, mm -hmm. he's, he's coming from Australia. He's been, at the time, he had been in Vegas for seven weeks. Um, so he probably decided, I'm not leaving without fighting somebody. So, you know, when the, when the change got made, you know, he just... Like, like I said, he's still locked in. If he's if he uh, if he's showing if he's any type of nervous, he didn't really show it at all. He just he just got he we just got straight to work. Mike, Michael, had you uh, ever met Tim before this? And uh, if not, uh, what were your thoughts about Tim going into this camp or going into the fight with Thurman and then having worked with him directly? Uh, wh what did you learn or so much uh, about about him more than anything else? Um, the biggest thing I learned is if he. he <laughs> He's a hard worker. He, he he does what he's told. I don't hear you don't hear a lot of uh, I don't want to I almost curse this huge. You don't hear a lot of complaining and, and uh, uh, out of him. He does he does what he's told. He's very methodical and very intricate and tactical in his in his training as well. Um, I had never met him before before this. I mean, we walked in, we shook hands. I mean, he's just just he's just focused. He's he's on he's on a mission. So, Mike, how did you get in contact with Tim Zhu? How did they get in contact with you so that you could be a sparring partner after uh, Keith Thurman pulled out of that fight? Oh, um, well, you know, it's about who you know. Because uh, Brian Mendoza <laughs> was sparring him before, uh, uh, before the switch. So he calls me Sunday night. Uh, it's a Sunday night. It's like you know, I'm on the East Coast. I'm, in, I'm from Maryland. I live in Maryland. It's uh, about 1130. And he calls me. Uh, I'm like, what's up, champ? He's like, man, I'm going to tell you right now, Thurman's out. So I found out before a lot of people did, like, Thurman's out. And then he says they're thinking of moving Fundora up to the main event, just basically to save the car. They were thinking about saving, uh, like, canceling the entire car. Uh, you yourself have, been a, have had a, a, a pretty good career, man. You know, you're, you're, always, you're never an easy guy to deal with. Seeing you fight, you know, you're a capable guy. Uh, and, and anybody who gets in the ring with you always has to fight, has a fight on their hands. Um, just talk about your dedication. Um, you know, you're a guy, obviously, who stays in the gym. But you're always looking to fight, or you, or do you, you get these kind of calls regularly, also, to get work with uh, certain people, especially now that Fondora is at a higher level. I can't imagine guys that low of a weight class being that tall. So you'll be a rare commodity to uh, get in touch with. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing about it is um, my 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 dad slash coach. He um, he instilled in me and my brother early. That man, we don't train for events. We train for opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my 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 first my my first and only uh, world title fight uh, came on 11 days' notice. I said against a two-time living, I said yes uh, because 
that was the mindset. That was the mindset we had. It was, it's an opportunity. So we're always in the gym. Even when I get calls now, as of late, I've gotten calls, but you know, the fights didn't go all the, didn't go through. But you know, my advisor, my Mike Rell, he'll ask, man, what kind of shape are you in? I'm like, the kind of shape that that I won't say no to whoever you're about to mention right now, you know? That's a fighter through and through, bro. Yeah, I love that attitude, that's awesome. man. That's that's the old school attitude that, you know, doesn't get enough credit anymore, man. You know, everybody's looking to nitpick because they want to protect the bank and try to steal the bank and whatnot. And there's guys like you. This is this is how all boxers used to be, man. But now mm. guys like you are more of a rarity, man. You're always in shape. Michael, so let's let's talk a little bit about your style versus Fundora style. You guys are different. Like, like, like champs, I've, I've seen you fight many times. You're a very smart, tactical guy. Your nickname is the professor for a reason. You go out there, you, you box behind your jab, you use your height. Fandora, not so much. He's a guy who gives up his height, gives up that jab, and likes to likes to scrap on the inside. Um, did you did you have to take away from your own style to fight a little bit more like Fandora because you were in a sparring partner position, um, or did you just, just business as usual, be yourself? They were just looking for good work. Uh, when I typically when I go up to camp, uh, uh, all the camps I've been, of the camps I've been to, they all just like, man, just just do you. I think the biggest thing is, you know, with Fandora being, you know, still about a half inch, uh, maybe about an inch taller than me still. Um, the biggest concern is not what what your fighter will do when they get close to Fandora, it's getting there. So, mm. you know, I fight behind my jab. I have a I have good lateral movement, so you know, I still I, I make up for that, you know, that extra inch that Fandora has. Uh, and people just want to want to see their fighter be able to, you know, close the gap. You know, if Fandor is there a little more than I, I typically am, and, you know, what fighters realize is if I can get close to hitting Michael Fox with these shots, Fandor is going to be there for me. I, I, I'm going to – they're going to be bombs on fight night, you know. So I go in there and I, I do I do me. You know what I mean? We uh, Even when I was, when I was sparring teams, it, you know, we were in a small ring, but, you know, I, I'm still – you know, it's a small ring for him too, so you – you got to get, you got to get, you still got to get through my jab. You got to get in there. I, we fought on the inside a little bit. I stayed on the inside a little bit, you know, but, um, you know, I rely I really heavy on my defense when I'm in close because, you know, my inside game is just designed to get me back to the outside where uh, I'm, I have, I have the best advantage. So, Michael, we're here on Deep Waters with Michael Fox, the professor, who was the last minute sparring partner for Tim Zoo. All right, Michael, how was, training for Tim Zhu here or being the sparring partner for Tim Zhu helped you in improving your boxing so that you can further your career? Yeah, well, you know, Tim Zhu, pressure fighter, but he's also, you know, he's also a chess player. Like I said, you can't do the same, you can't do the same thing a bunch of times. You know what I mean? Not, not without him countering. And that shows why he's at the highest level. You know, he's a world champion. He's about to fight for a unification, a title unification. Um, but it's little, it's little intricacies that, you know, made made it a, a chess match. He's a he's a front he's a front foot boxer. He's not just he's not actually it may it, for most people they think he's just taking punches until he gets to the range he wants to. But um I told I uh, I've done previous interviews, I told you that's one of the best high guards I've been up against. You know, and it's a you know it takes a certain type of you know discipline to feel the weight of somebody's shot, keep your hand up and still try to counter and still fight. Uh fight off the uh fight off of what you're feeling, you know? Thank you very much, Michael. We appreciate your time here on Deep Waters. Michael Fox, the professor, here on Deep Waters. And don't forget, you can download the Pro Box TV app as well. And every Monday through Friday, we have shows here at Deep Waters on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Time for a quick break. We'll have more of boxing's top stories here on Pro Box TV. Welcome back to Deep Waters, where we take a deeper dive into boxing's top stories every Monday through Friday here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. All right, Terrence Crawford has been injected into the race to fight the winner of Zoo Fondora. Now, Earl Spence Jr. says he wants to take on the winner of Zoo Fondora. Paulie, what do you make of Earl Spence Jr. throwing his hat into the ring for that winner? You know what? It's, uh, uh, it's a big newsworthy piece. You know, Errol Spence was a dominant welterweight champion not long ago, unified welterweight champion, and on a lot of people's pound-for-pound pound lists just not that long ago, you know? So, so I, I think him showing up to the fight and, and saying this is obviously newsworthy. The thing is, the guy who just beat him has the upper hand because Crawford also has said that he wants the attention of the winner of Zoo and Fundora and may want to get in the ring and fight. And Crawford probably has the upper hand because he's kind of commanding a lot of momentum right now in his career, uh, not to mention he's probably number one on everybody's pound-for-pound lists. So it's, uh, it could be a, a, a tremendous clash with the winner of this fight and, and 
Terrence Crawford. But Errol Spence saying this still is a big deal, and also it's a bigger deal for Tim Zool because now you're seeing he's attracting some of the bigger names in the sport, and they're mentioning his name, and they want to get in the ring with him. It's not that long ago that Tim Zool was kind of a boogeyman in this weight class. You know, he was kind of a guy that, you know, he was dangerous, but he wasn't popular enough, especially in the States. Now he's headlining a pay-per-view in the States. He was just a big name from Australia. There was a lot of question marks about him. And so, you know, a lot of guys weren't really mentioning his name. Let's not forget that Jamel Charlo uh, was, and Tim Zhu looked like it was about to get made. And then all of a sudden, there was a detour put, put there for Tim Zhu. And Jamel wound up in the Canelo fight. And Tim Zhu still found himself looking for a bigger name that could get him in that position. So fast forward to here. All of a sudden, okay, Jamel's out. You know, he, he's not really in the conversation at the moment. But... You've got big names now coming to the uh, super welterweight division uh, from the welterweight division, and probably even other guys are going to be mentioning Zoo's name if he's able to beat Fondora. Of course, Fondora is here to spoil the show, and he himself, the Towering Inferno, is, is no easy task. But I like the fact that this fight itself is generating this kind of momentum, this kind of interest from some of the bigger stars in the sport, because like it or not, Errol Spence is still one of the biggest names in the sport despite coming off that loss. I don't know if realistically... He should really be talking about wanting to fight the winner until he gets a win in between. I mean, technically, by boxing rules, you're not supposed to be coming off a knockout loss and be allowed to get a world title fight. Either way, as I said, I feel like Terrence Crawford has the upper hand because he also has put his name in there. It might help with the pay-per-view buys as well as you start circulating Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr.'s name in the mix there. All right, Chris, what do you make of Errol Spence Jr. injecting himself into this conversation for the Tim Fundora winner? Donna. Uh -oh. the, Jaws, Jaws. the big fish, the big fish is coming back to Vegas. He's throwing his hat in the mix. And uh, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna tell you how th this, there's a path for this fight actually to happen. So you're looking at Terrence Crawford, right? He's got a dwindling timeline. How much time does he really have left? What is he really looking to do? Does he care as much about legacy? Or does he care more about money at this point? His legacy is cemented. He's one of the best fighters that we've ever seen. I, I, I think no matter what he does next, that, that, that's not gonna change. So does he go down and get another, another world title, look to get another world title against the winner of Zhu Fandora, or does he do what his original plan was, which was to fight Eubank at 160, which puts him that one, that one step closer to a possible Canelo fight. Mm. He's looking big, big money. I don't think the winner of this fight gives the kind of dollar signs that would really intrigue Crawford enough to make that move, which allows a, opens up a vacuum for Spence to step in. I would not be surprised if we, don't, if we saw Spence versus the winner of Fandora and, and Zoo. Listen, if Zoo wins, is that big enough money for Crawford? I don't know. Mm. If Fandora wins, certainly not. But there's too many question marks for Spence. I mean, he just got destroyed. Yep. You know, people are talking. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're I mean, absolutely the whole, right. The whole rumor is, is he the same after the car eyes, accident? He's the same injury? after the eye surgery. But, and then he gets whooped in the Crawford fight. Are you going to have those same question marks now and bring them into a pay-per-view headliner for a, a double world champion? Not to mention the obvious, the obvious, which is you're not allowed to fight for a championship coming off a loss, let alone a one-sided knockout loss. Right. You're, you're acting like the rules get upheld. Yeah. <laughs> this is my... Yeah. 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 Here, here's a, here's I, a, I'm trying to... I'm trying know, to play I know, you're trying, you're trying I'm to trying do, do it right here. You're trying to do the right thing. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm being devil's advocate here. here and and here's, here's why. Who was Zeus supposed to fight? Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman. Mm -hmm. Right. Keith Thurman, a guy who's never fought in the weight class, a guy who apparently is injury prone, older guy. But what was he? He was a name to American audiences. Was Thurman coming over loss too? Uh, no, yeah. he beat Mario Barrios in his last fight. Yeah, so Before okay. that was Pacquiao. Okay. But he had been he hadn't fought in three three years. Mm -hmm. So Errol Spence comes in. You have a big name. You have another American fighter. You have a guy who hasn't fought in the weight class. It's a lot of similarities to Keith Thurman. There's a lot of ways yeah. that this fight can actually make yeah. sense. So don't then, be surprised if the big fish gets the next chance. Did you trust uh, Spence in that situation, though, to, to come through and make a good fight? Spence considering... always says, I don't believe in tune-ups. He wants big fights. Mm. And you know what? I mean, again, his name may carry that. Uh, I, I, I'm sitting here trying to talk about the rules. Keith Thurman, technically, being off for three years is not supposed to be in the top 15 of any sanctioning body being off three years. Yeah. And you can only get a world title fight if you're in the top 15 of, of the sanctioning body. So the fact that that was gonna about to be a world title fight shows that the rules well, don't And Ghana was what? With the top 10 bodies. after Fury? Like one organization? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, but lost. at least he fought. <laughs> And, you know, yeah. even though he came off a loss, that also didn't make a lot of sense. But this yeah. one coming being off three years and winding up in the top 15, because that's the only way you're allowed to fight for a world title is being in the top 15 of that sanctioning body. That one also, the rules didn't apply. So, yeah, I mean, you can easily, if they need to make that fight, they can easily insert Spence in the top 15 uh, of the 154-pound division if he just announces, hey, I'm going up in weight. Again, you're not supposed to do it coming off a loss, but, you know, stranger things have happened. And you know what? You're kind of changing my mind, champ. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, as much as I don't want to see... 
Terrence and Canelo, man, because I don't want to. I don't want to even go for that. It's too many diff weight classes mm -hmm. difference. It's it just doesn't intrigue me as much. I could see that path being woven through a, a Eubank fight first, and uh, and the whole uh, you know Bo Bo Mack has trained both Eubank and Crawford. That could be spice up that promotion. Man, yeah, yeah we might end up with Zufandora winner versus Spence. I'll tell you. Yeah, and then there's all those question marks about Spence. Mm. Yeah. And remember, Spence, after the Crawford fight, said that he wants to move up. He wanted to fight Crawford at 154 yeah, in the rematch clause. So that's another aspect to all of this. All right, we'll continue the conversation here on Deep Waters. Welcome back to Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. We're having too much fun in between the breaks here between myself, Pauly, and Chris. All right, uh, Pauly, I wanted to ask you here. This is a hypothetical. If Tim Zhu fought Earl Spence Jr., who would win? Who do you think would win? Again, I mean, it's it too, many, too many variables with Spence. You know, the yeah. one positive variable is he says at a 154 he's going to be stronger. He doesn't have to struggle to make the weight. And he was, you know, it was pretty, pretty known news around the business that Spence struggled a lot to make 147. So the one positive, the, the four Spence, the argument for Spence is at 154 he's more fresh. He's going to be able to breathe a little bit into his body and it'll be a better version of Errol Spence. The opposing figure is we're basically what everybody's been saying. Is his eye okay? Has he been the same since the surgery? Has he been the same since that bad car accident? Is he going to be the same after getting beaten from pillar to post by Terrence Crawford? Which also, though, that's the kind of loss that you know fighters don't really recover from once they're they're past 30 years old. You know, it's, it's, those kind of beatings change change you if they happen when you're older. You know, there's a lot of question marks. Personally, right now, if I would you put a gun to my head and say, okay, what do I think? I think Zoo probably knocks him out. Ooh, knocks out Errol Spence Jr. Ooh, okay, Chris, what do you make? What's your what's your take on that? Tim Zoo versus Spence Jr. Listen, in a perfect world with an absolutely healthy uh, Errol Spence, I, I can see a path of victory for him because he uses his jab longer from the outside really well when he when he when he wants to. And I think at the new weight at 154, he's gonna have the endurance that he always used to have because he was like the Terminator back then. He's gonna have a better chin, um, and he's he does have a long jab. He can box. He showed that in the Mikey Garcia fight. And he's, he's, he's a workhorse. He throws a lot of punches. And there, there's opportunities for Zoo as he closes distance where he's vulnerable to guys who can jab. We saw that against Tony Harrison. Um, but I don't think Errol Spence is healthy. I don't mm. think – I think those eye injuries are real. Um, I don't care how you walked away from that car accident, getting thrown from a vehicle um, while unconscious – there, there's, there's a lot of little intricate muscles in your body and tendons and, and, and soft tissue that can be damaged. Also, your brain. It's another, another, uh, yeah. another thing that um, would definitely be affected by that. So I, I don't know how you can be healthy. I know everyone was, was, a lauding, was, was, was lauding him as being like, you know, Superman because he came out with only broken teeth. But listen, there, there's soft tissue damage. There's other things going on there. Obviously, the eyes are, are a recurring issue. And he is... 33 plus yeah. so it just your body's different I I, I was saying this re just recently I was like after 33 years old I was not the same guy my mm -hmm. body was different everything was different my body was different my training was different I had some very good fights and very good performances after 33 but I was a different guy so even with all yeah. the advances in in treatment and technology and training Father still. time is undefeated mm -hmm. man and and and, and, and we're not going to get into the drug discussion no. but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you're not if you're not using drugs then yeah father time is undefeated mm -hmm. and, 33 and years your old, body changes 33 years old is actually when it kind of changed for me yeah. Yeah. So, yeah it's actually the exact age when it changed for me but i'll tell you what if it was the old spence like the the, the streaking spence at welterweight and he just goes up as a champion and say okay i can't make this weight and he's streaking at the welterweight mm -hmm. division there's a, there's a lot more intrigue here if yeah. you get yeah. this version of zoo as well because obviously at the time spence was doing that Zoo was just a prospect. So if you gave me this version of Zoo right now, who's starting to streak, and you give me that version of Spence that was streaking at the time, and you tell me, oh, Spence is going to go up and wait, and they're going to fight, that would be, to me, fight of the year type stuff because yeah. they're they both high-engaging kind of fighters yes. in their prime, you know? It's just now, you know, there's all the things that Chris, uh, the champ, just mentioned, and also... Spence has made a lot of money, and he's kind of set there. You know what I mean? Mm. It, it, there's also that psychology where you're not chasing a lot. At, you're not chasing as much anymore. You're just kind of there trying to grab paychecks as opposed to chasing that greatness. Spence's greatness has been achieved. He could achieve more, but he's not. It, your mind just, especially when you've got, become that comfortable financially, your mind is not going to let you take extra chances and, and go for and, and climb through that fire to go get it like it would have before. Zoo at this point, though, is at that point in his career. He is just starting to make his name. He is at that age where that you still have that burning fire to achieve more things. So it's also, there's the damage, the mileage on Spence, uh, the, the lot of all those question marks, but also you're at a point in your career where Zoo has that fire. And you wonder if at the age Spence is at, does he have that fire? 
And that's also a, a, a big factor. It's a young man's sport. Let me throw on one, one more point. Say he is healthy. Say that we're, we're, we're over-exaggerating you know, the injuries and, and everything's fine. What about the psychological baggage that comes from taking the beating that he took Ooh, from a guy like Terrence Crawford? Yeah. You're a guy who's been dominant your whole life, your whole career. I'm talking about amateurs. I'm talking about pros. And then for you to get shut down the way that you, he was by Crawford, shut down, beat up, stopped. That is that. Yeah. There's there's psychological trauma yeah, that yeah. comes with that. Yeah, your, your 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 confidence yeah. is 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 uh, fractured. That's a at great that point. point because also you're 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 wondering, do I want to go through that door again? Cause, yes. Because yeah. Zoo is gonna take you through that door again. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Or do you have the fire within you to respond? You know, uh, he Zoo's wasn't name. Zoo's he, name is a soul taker. He, he, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he it's, wasn't. It's a, it's a, it's a great yeah. name. And yeah. he wasn't able to respond against Crawford, though we know he tried. Yeah, he but did try. But now you get that break. You, it settles in. You're back in a fight, and all of a sudden, that door opens again to hell, so to speak. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah. oh my god, I got to be in this kind of fight again. You're comfortable financially. You're, you've got a lot of mileage on you. Do you have what it takes to enter that door again, enter that room again? I don't know if at that age, and I'm mm. just speaking even from my own experience. Yeah, this, this, if, is, all, this is all theory if, and hypothetical. If, right? yeah. yeah, but I'm right. told psychology of, of past fighters in general, including our own experience, my yeah. own experience. I couldn't go through that door with Danny Garcia once what happened with Porter happened to me. You know what I mean? It just, and again, I was at 33 years old. You know, I, was, I wasn't able to just get into that door. When it presented itself, I wasn't able to flip that switch the same way I could before, you know? So it's like, do you, does Spence have that? I mean, that'll be the question if they make the fight. Yeah. It's a big name. Thurman was a big name. You mm -hmm. might sell it that way. Mm -hmm. It may very well happen, but there's going to be all these question marks, and that's what we're talking about, you know? And, and of course, you know, yeah. fans are also going to be uh, mixed opinions as well, and that's why the fight probably sells. Yeah. Now, let's say Tim Zhu gets past Sebastian Fundora, which is, we don't know that because Fundora's a good fighter, but let's say he is the favorite. Uh, Chris, if you're in his camp, Tim Zhu's camp, what, do you, what would you want to see him do next? Assuming he gets past Fondora. Well, I mean, if I got two, uh, um, we're assuming he wins, right? So right. I, I got, I got, I got two fresh belts hanging on both sides of my shoulders at this point, and I got some of the biggest names in the sport asking to fight me. Man, I'm sitting back and I'm waiting, I'm waiting for guys to take their checkbooks out. Mm. Who, 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 okay. Who, 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 who wants yeah. it? Who wants these? Who's next? Mm -hmm. I think you know he's, he, the way that he is, from what I can tell from his interviews and the way that he carries himself, um, seems like a very genuine, genuine guy. He's going to want the biggest fight possible. He's going to look for a Crawford fight, to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the best plan right away. I think he should actually build up his star power a little more, maybe go look for some other titles. But I, I think the Spence fight makes a lot of sense for him, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think it's an easier fight than fighting Crawford. Um, I think it's one step closer to, to introducing him to you know, the audience. global elite and, and, and the, the American eyes. The fight is, as we're talking through it, it makes more and more sense. Um, but, I mean, he's going to have a lot of options. He is... He is literally in the driver's seat for whatever he wants to do moving forward. This is assuming he beats Sebastian Correct. Fundora right. this coming Saturday. So yeah. which, is not, which is not a foregone right. conclusion. And that's exactly. the Global Boxing League, guys. We don't want you guys to get twisted. The Global yeah. Boxing League. Yeah. So. Yeah, don't, 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 don't come for <laughs> but, me. I don't. But, but I, I, I'll say, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see Crawford having a lot of options, but I could see Spence being brought in here for, for that reason. Like I said, it's, it's what we had uh, Thurman for as well. And I can see Spence being brought in for that reason, and there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of question marks. But I don't want to disrespect Fundora totally. Right. We've totally forgotten right. about him. What if Fundora puts up a really good fight, Ooh. and then we got a rematch? Ooh. Yeah, that that's, too. that's very possible. Because Fundora very makes possible. for fun fights. It's not. That's not just oh, throw, throw him out the bag. Even if he comes up short, I mean, we're saying if he doesn't win, he may put up a fight of the year type of candidate where hey, we want to see a rematch. And I'm yeah. going to say I don't think anyone except for Brian Mendoza is going to be growing, running, yeah. running at uh, Fundora <laughs> if he wins this fight. <laughs> And don't forget, Brian, uh, Sebastian Fundora, hey, we had an interview with him on Pro Box TV, so check it out on our YouTube channel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Deep Waters. Don't forget, we do this every Monday through Friday here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.